he had spoken such insolence to Java, he'd have fed you to his menagerie. Please, speak freely. Greetings to whoever this may concern, Christian Aguilar here back with another series review and in today's series review I'm going to be reviewing, if you couldn't tell by my shirt, The Book of Boba Fett Episode 1. Now before I get into it, I am a little conflicted, I don't know if I should wait for the entire season to finish. I think there's only seven episodes, I think. And I'm just wondering if I should do uh, a review for each episode or should I just wait for the entire season? Since I'm doing episode one, I feel like I'm already going down the path of reviewing it episode by episode. And if there's only seven episodes, I think that's doable, that's manageable. I would like to hear your opinion if you have one. Would you prefer me reviewing a full season, wait till it finishes so I can review the full season beginning to end? Or if it's something short, like seven episodes, maybe even 10 episodes, would you want me to do episode by episode? What I'm doing with the new Dexter revival is I'm reviewing the first five episodes and then I'm reviewing the next five when they air and when they come out because the season's only 10 episodes long. So I thought that would be a nice chunk to review it in two halves. Reason why I decided to do that is because I saw the first five episodes. Well, now I'm on like episode eight, but I saw the first five episodes and I got to a certain point where I caught up, you know, my parents and I all caught up and we had to wait till new episodes. Now we have to wait week by week for the new episodes to come out. So I'm like, okay, let me just review the first five then. And I'll save my thoughts for the second five later down the line. But with Boba Fett, if it's only seven episodes, I might do it episode by episode. But again, I, I still wanna hear what you guys think. Should I do a full season or do you want me to do episode by episode? And another thing before I get into the review, this will be not really going in depth of everything that happens, but there will be spoilers in this review. I'm going to say right off the bat, it's a great episode. If you haven't seen it already, great episode. And if you are waiting for the entire season to watch it all back to back, thank you for clicking, but this is going to be a spoiler filled review. So if you don't care, keep on watching. But if you do click away, go away, watch whatever amount of episodes you want to watch and then come back and watch the reviews. All right. So have you seen the first episode? We good. All right. I'm gonna be talking about the first episode, there might be some spoilers, so fair warning before I go in. So the series stars Tamora Mortensen as Boba Fett and Ming-Na Wen as Fennec Shand. And this picks up directly after the events of both Mandalorian Season 2 and Star Wars Episode 6, The Return of the Jedi. So the thing I like that we got going on in this first episode is that they're showing two different narratives for Boba Fett. One that's set after the events of Mando Season 2, which I guess is the present in the series. And then one that's set in the past, right after he gets eaten by the Sarlacc pit. And we get this past narrative because he's healing in this healing tub, right? He's in this water bathtub and he's healing. And while he's in this healing state, he has dreams or visions of the past and what he's been through. There has been a lot of fan theories, fan fiction. There's even been some spin-off novels and comic books depicting how Boba Fett survived that whole attack. There's even an awesome image of him within the monster trying to fight his way out of it. So it was always cool to know that maybe someday this would be adapted into live action. And the day is here, Star Wars fans. We finally get to see a canon version of how Boba Fett escaped the Sarlacc pit. And my goodness, was it so badass to see him covered in, in saliva, all this, all this gooey substance and him being surrounded by fleshy innards. It's crazy to know that he was stuck inside this monster and he had to one take the oxygen from another stormtrooper which was also cool to see like a rogue stormtrooper just stuck in there you know so to see boba fett use his survival instinct so quickly to try to get out of this situation was really really badass i would have loved to seen more of the monster maybe the monster was still alive and he had like a little fight one-on-one -on -one with it but I get why they want to speed it up a little bit. Maybe that would cost too much with the production value. But regardless, I thought that would have been a cool little scene to see him go up against the Sarlacc monster and then finally defeat him. Despite that, I find what we have in this episode to be pretty badass and, and pretty satisfying for longtime Boba Fett fans. I also love how in the opening they flash back to when he was a kid back in the Clone Wars. Like this is a scene taken from episode two, Attack of the Clones from the movies. And I love when they show him as a child lifting up Jango Fett's helmet, his father's helmet, and he's like, you know, putting it to his head. I just loved that scene when I was a kid. Even when I saw it when I was younger, I'm like, whoa, well, I know because I knew who he became, you know, like he becomes Boba Fett. So to see him pick up his father's helmet, you know, his beheaded head, it was pretty disturbing, but awesome at the same time. 
It was so epic and disturbing. I never seen a disturbing epic moment like that in a Star Wars film of recent since Attack of the Clones when I saw that in theaters. I also love how they showed us how the Jawas took the armor from uh, Boba Fett because in Mandalorian season two we saw that Timothy Oliphant's character was wearing the armor and did not fit him whatsoever and he said that he got it off of a pack of Jawas that, that stripped it from another bounty hunter right and so now we see the Jawas stripping it from Boba so it was really cool to see the little adventure that the armor went on just to make it full circle right back to its owner. Also the moment where uh, the Tusken Raiders come and find him after the Jawas scavenge his armor. The Tusken Raiders come and find him and it's cool to see the Tusken Raiders back because I think the last time we saw him was in one of the seasons of Mandalorian and they seem to come off as pretty civilized people. However, this is Tatooine. This is their territory. He's caught in the middle of the desert. They're gonna be who they are. This is their land and they're gonna act their native way. I always loved how these people walked the thin line of civilized and, and barbaric. So to see them tie up Bulba and pull him from their uh, big yaks that they start riding back and forth, right? So going back a little bit to the narrative, I was talking about how I jumping back and forth to past and present. I really wonder where the flashbacks for the past are going to end. Are we going to see Mandalorian again? Are we going to see their little meetup or are they just going to end it like at the moments before he meets them. I'm pretty sure they're probably going to end it there or they might end it earlier. Who knows? So I'm really curious to see where the flashbacks are going to end and where that's going to take us. I also found it cool how in the present when he wakes up from the healing bath, you see the servant droids put on his armor piece by piece. It's very royalty like, like he's a king, you know, like he's just a king of his kingdom. He woke up from, from a nap and now he's being dressed by his servants. It just felt very royalty like and I thought that was pretty badass. It really shows the amount of authority Boba Fett now has taking Jabba's throne. And with him taking his throne, I admire how he's not trying to rule with fear, but with respect. He's giving everyone equal playing grounds here, you know? He's coming in very diplomatic, and I like that about his character because to me personally, that was the last thing I expected from a character like this. He always came off as a cold-blooded bounty hunter, badass behind a mask. You don't even know if he has a good side or a bad side. He's just that one rogue character that could teeter either way, and I always love that about him. So to see him be so diplomatic in his ruling, it's, it's pretty one, refreshing, and two, it's very interesting because, of course, everyone around him, even Fennec and, and even one of the other servant droids were like, you know, I think it's best to use a little force, use a little fear, because that's how you maintain power. That's how you maintain authority on Tatooine. And I just love how Jon Favreau, Dave Filoni, and Robert Rodriguez are really opening up this side of the Star Wars universe. Like we know of Tatooine, we know Luke came from here, we know Anakin was from here, but we don't know the underground, the criminal underground, and how basically their society is ran. So it's really cool to see this, there's a new king in town type story with Boba Fett. And I don't know where this could be going in the future. I mean, they're kind of setting up this mayor to be the villain because the mayor of the town that they're in he didn't show up in person. He sent one of his representatives to show up and give him his warm welcome. He didn't go there in person. So that kind of rubbed Boba the wrong way. And it also leads me to think, um, maybe like many of you out there, that he was the one that sent the shielded men to go after Boba and Fennec. So as of right now, they're setting up the mayor to be the villain. I wonder if that's going to be the case throughout or if there's going to be another antagonist coming sometime soon. Also, knowing that this episode is directed by Robert Rodriguez, I find it really cool how the music in this episode has a lot of guitar string and salsa inspiration and that is definitely 100% Robert Rodriguez guitar playing in this episode I just find that really awesome being a fan of his and finally the last thing I love about this episode happens way at the end it's when Boba and that Greedo looking dude starts digging for water in the sand then they accidentally dig up like a monster that was hiding or sleeping in the sand and the way Boba took out that monster is a heavy reference to how Princess Leia took out Jabba the Hutt back in episode 6 with the chain around the neck and just strangling until he is not moving anymore. That was pretty awesome and I felt that was a badass callback to Princess Leia. So with all that being said, I gotta give this first episode... <sighs> Oh, this is hard to rate because it's so damn high up there. This episode is a solid, solid episode. All right, four, four out of five Scars Guards. It's four out of five because this episode is really, really solid. Um, I just feel like it should be getting better from here. That's why I didn't want to give it the perfect rating because it's just not going to go anywhere further if it's going to stay that way. But 
regardless this is a really great start and i cannot wait to see where the narrative takes us moving forward so that is it for today's video thank you so much for reaching to the end of it have you seen the first episode of the book of boba fett what did you think of it let me know down below please like share and subscribe support this little side hobby i am doing the rendered image every thursday and sunday nights 8 30 p.m live on youtube link to the channel will be down below in the description i hope you're all safe and well out there and i'll see you all in the next one take care